Okay, we are back and we're doing a very brief version of some key aspects of tying jig nymphs. We have our bead, our wire, our thread to a consistent point about where the barb would start. Super glue. I have some Coque de Lyon here. This makes great tailing. You don't need much. Now, how much? People say four or five, six strands. Um, I don't count but I like to keep it sparse. So I think that four to six is great. You strip it off. Now, you don't want your tail too long. You could probably get away with no tail, but I like to have a tail. So I'm gonna put it in here. And again, I'm, I'm starting my thread on the tail before the bend, before the curve of the hook. Now, I think that looks about right, but I may want to shorten it just a little bit. So I'm going to pull. Actually, I'm shortening it quite a bit. Keep it on top. I'm going to wrap forward just as far as the wire starts. I'm going to trim. As this is where the really fine point scissors are really important so you can get close. I'm going to rib this fly with a small wire. This happens to be olive. I start my wire on the side of the hook toward me. That will get it started ribbing just right. And I'm going to put this in my material clip. It's a new material clip. I really like it. So for a body, we're going to be, go real simple and also fishy. I like to put just a touch of dubbing wax on my index finger and forefinger. I find it helps me. Now, in dubbing, this, this is black ice dub. I want this really slim. I want it really slim. The other thing I want to do, in terms of reinforcement, there's nothing that quite matches just a hint of super glue, whether you're using peacock or pheasant tail or ice dub or anything the tiniest little bit of super glue is going to make a huge difference if you notice things have changed just a little bit i tied the fly finished the fly but doggone it it wasn't as thin as i wanted it to be i really want this fly to be on the thin side so I turned off the camera and I came back and I cut it off with a razor blade. And here we go. I'm taking another go at it. So uh, lesson, the, the dubbing that I was using, the black ice dub, <clears throat> these are synthetic materials, but surprisingly, they are not the same from packet to packet. Some dubbing is really difficult to get a slender taper. It just is. Not your fault. Well, it may be your fault, but it could be the dubbing. So I've shifted over to this uh, peacock ice dub, and this is allowing me to tie a much more slender. So here's an important technique. I'm gonna twist that wire off and I'm going to steady my hook. I'm not going to cut it. I'm just going to wiggle it loose. Nice clean uh, junction there. And I held my hook steady there. So I want to have a thorax that's a little bit fuzzier than the rest of the body. Uh, and I'm going to accomplish that with what? With, I have a nice little package of tan hair's ice dub and I'm going to use a different method of spinning but again I don't want too much so make my dubbing loop you could split your thread if you wanted to I don't normally do that One turn, two turns, that's it. Go around.
around here just like I'm tying an intruder trim this close now I would like to finish with a hot spot 40 years ago I'd be finished that would be my nymph but not now now we want a hot spot so I have fluorescent shrimp pink eye stub and this is pretty wiry material so I want to get it in there and I'm going to be uh, conservative here I'm going to do like three quarters of an inch of zap I'll go on first then my hot spot follows Now my three turn whip finish and we are done. We've got all the basic elements of a very effective jigged nymph. Our tail isn't too long. The back part of the body is nice and slim. It's ribbed with a small wire. We have a slightly bushier thorax and we have a hot spot and the bead is properly placed. There you go. I hope these techniques help you a little bit.